physically in this case and you need someone to tap you and wake you back I mean bring you back to reality so now you're going to tap one more person but this time you're going to tap yourself and you're going to call your own name and say God has done new things baby Lee God has done new things hallelujah do you believe yourself if you don't, we can give you another one second to quickly tap yourself again. Maybe you're in deep sleep. Anybody want to tap themselves again quickly? Bemini, God has done new things. Hallelujah. The Lord has done new things. And it will soon manifest in Jesus' name. I just ask you to please bow your heads with me. Our Father and our God, the one who is able the one who is capable, the one who is able to do all things, not some, not a few, but all things, we give you praise, we give you honor, we exalt your holy name, we adore you in this place, we say be glorified forever, Amen. be magnified forever, Amen. in this place, in our lives, in our homes. And as we share your word, we ask that you will minister to us. Amen. Lord, as I render myself as a vessel, I ask, Lord, that you use me for your glory. Amen. And I pray, Lord, that your people will be blessed Amen. because indeed you're a good God. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. To God. Be the glory, great things he had done, so loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded that his life and atonement for us and open the life that all may go Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. great things he has done. I want to thank Pastor and Mommy Adejake. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great honor, a great privilege to be here. I'm so excited to be here and I have been blessed from the moment I stepped in till this very point and I know it's, it hasn't ended because I'm going home with it. And I will come back and testify Amen. to the glory of the Lord. Idia Madi Joker, that's what I'm for her. That's how we that's how you know we know each other, you know. That's that's the code. Anyone who doesn't know it, see us after the service. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean we met on Adorable Mom, like she said, um, on Facebook. And to the glory of God it's been over six years now, let's say. And God has been faithful. She's one of our greatest supporters on the page. She's been a, amazing, a tremendous blessing, not just to myself, even to the members of the group. She's been a tremendous blessing and she's very well known. Thank you so much, Ma, for all the contributions. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. May the Lord continue to increase you and bless you. I mean, when we first met her, she was on the hot seat at the times. It would, I, I myself couldn't believe it that she was a, you know, a grandma. 
that she looks like a sweet 16. Thank God. Hallelujah. And I want to thank you, church. Thank you for the amazing experience. And as always, to God be the glory. We're talking about the experience. And I want you to come with me. I have titled this, and I must give you a little warning. There's something about me. I love playing with words. So I'm going to give you the title, but then I've given you a disclaimer. I'll explain the rest later. So the title of this message is The SMS Fact. The SMS Fact. Now, I haven't gone to do any scientific research, so I'm not here to tell you some facts you don't know about SMS. And neither am I here to tell you some new discoveries about SMS. But I'm here to give you or share with you the revelation that I got. I got it for myself and I'm happy to share with you. Because when you receive blessings, it's good for you to tap into it first. And so the SMS fact, I, I love to play with words. I love acronyms. I love mnemonics. And that's what I've done with the SMS fact. I'm going to tell you what each one represents by the experience. But first I'll I appreciate if you could turn your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Samuel, which is the text for this program. Chapter 1 and verses 19 to 20. And we would read together. To save time, I would, I, would read the, I would read the verses and you can just follow me. Are we all there? Okay, amen. The first line says, Then the rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. If you're like me, you take notes, Every everything has to be written down. Thank God for a wonderful memory. So I write everything down. Um, you can put beside that action or took action. And then the next line says, and returned and came to their house at Ramah and Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, you can put beside that action number two. Then the next line says, And the Lord remembered her. And I have put beside that reaction. Because for every action, there must be a reaction. I think that's what we were taught in school. And that's the reality of life. And so it came to pass in the process of time. And I have put beside that time. And then the next line says that Hannah conceived, and I have put beside that result, but progress loading. And it says, and bore a son, and beside that I have put manifestation, i.e. evidence. And on the last few words it says, and called his name, and beside that I have put testament and for all that may be wondering why testament rather than testimony they're all in the same line testament means something that serves as a sign or evidence of a specified event fact and all of that and the final line says samuel saying because i have asked for him from the lord has anyone received a message on their phones and they were smiling to the phone. Just you, yourself, and you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the one that works that magic the most is <laughs> when you get a, I don't know if you do, if you get that here in Ireland, but when you get a, a bank alert that says, uh, I mean in the UK, but in, in Ireland, one of our banks will send you a text uh, and say, look, this is how much you have in, in your account, or, or you know, you've just gotten something. And you're just going to smile, especially when you weren't even expecting that money or that much to come in. And then you start to smile to yourself. Now, the experience, I'm still coming somewhere, is very necessary. I mean, absolutely necessary. And the other thing I want to say is there is a difference between the experience and an experience. And the difference is in the T-H-E word. An ex the experience can be an experience. And when an experience becomes the experience, then something has happened. 
Okay, let's go back to the SMS. So why did I ask about smiling to your phone um, when you get a message, or even from a loved one, or something that you've been expecting, and you start to smile and you're just by yourself? It's because a message has been delivered. And what happens when the experience happens is that a message has been delivered. And that comes in all forms. So someone who's been looking unto God to say, I want to have a child. And then they finally get that news of, you are pregnant. That's an SMS that you've just received. Someone who's looking for a job and gets a call and says, come in for an interview and then you go in for an interview, get another call that says you can start or you get a letter or whatever the news says, when you get an answer, by my message today, you have received an SMS. Now, what is this SMS representing? The first letter, which is S, I have called it specific. I did say the experience it's not the same as an experience, but the experience can be an experience. For it to be the experience, there has to be something specific about it. So uh, I've been driving on, on a particular road all the time, and the, the Garda, we call them the Garda or the guards in, in Ireland, and they suddenly stop you, and you get a fine. That is an experience. Not a positive one, but it is an experience. That's the same road I've been driving on every single day. But then something has happened that has made it different. There's been a specific instance. That S specific defines a point in time. So at a point in time, something happens. There is an encounter. There is an event. There is an occurrence. And what makes it specific? It leaves an impression. Something happens that makes that particular moment unforgettable. Adrian Joker talked about 2019 being a particular specific year for someone just now. And what makes it different from all the other years is there has been certain events that have made this year different. When my child was born that year, something happened that year makes that year unforgettable for me. There's been many 12th of December since he was born, but that particular, or rather before he was born, but that particular day, the 12th of December no longer became 12th of December. It became a specific point in time. Now we look forward to every 12th of December, and I pray that we would have many more of it by His grace. Amen. And so also for a lot of us, so many different instances, moments became specific. If that moment became characterized by a distinct event, a peculiar moment, and we've all definitely had a good share of the experience. But what happens is life is a sum of many experiences, many the experience, if you understand what I mean. And so that's why we have one the experience, and then we're looking forward to another, and then we're looking forward to another, and it never ends. And so we sometimes forget the ones that have gone past, and we're wondering why would God not do this one? Why has this not happened? And then are we anticipating the next experience? But there has been many. And that's why I love King David. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget. Why? Because he knows it's so easy to forget. I'm, a, I'm from a wonderful tribe, and we have lots of adages. And I find as I'm, for someone who wouldn't even speak much of it, I find that as I'm going older, those adages are coming to me and having more meaning you know, as I go. And one is coming to my mind. And they would say that um, the good that you've done to someone has been, you know, so long that, um, ah, God help me with this translation, that this person has forgotten and they said the foolish one has forgotten about it. Because it's been so long. So someone that you've been good to will come and look you in the face and, you know, just from air to toe, 
Just end it there one second. I am looking like I'm, I'm not wearing my glasses, so maybe that's why I'm not seeing this person right. But it's because time has gone past and this person has forgotten. And many a times, many of us are like that. Time has gone past and we forget. There is one song, I'll leave it for later. I'll talk about it later. A moment or two that has left a mark and impression, that is what the experience is. And we have a lot of this from childhood to the grave. Our parents will be able to tell us of different the experience they had when we they were pregnant of us. So the moment we were conceived, in fact, the moment we were conceived, the experience started. Because there have been so many experiences, but then the experience happened and we were conceived. It took the experience between our parents for them to conceive us. So our lives are a sum of all this experience. And you know the beautiful thing? There is a popular saying, experience is the greatest teacher. A very good friend of mine, we were having a conversation once, I said, look, I cannot um, stress myself too much. You know when you're dealing with teenagers, sometimes it can be a major handful. So he says, look, I tell my children, you either learn from experience or you learn from counsel. And he said he got it from his dad as well. And I said, that's true, I'm going to borrow it now. I'll be using it to either learn from experience or you learn from counsel. So I would advise you, take it. If you don't take it, by God's grace, experience will teach you the rest. I'll be backing you up in prayer that the experience will not be a disastrous one. But sometimes experience is good. It, it, it's the best teacher. And it costs us. It doesn't come cheap at all. Oh, it doesn't come cheap at all. It's, it's not five a penny. So with an SMS, you have to be specific. Because if we start to tell too much story, what happens? When you're texting someone and you're telling too much story in that text, who knows what happened? Yeah, we're all on WhatsApp now, so it's okay. I understand why you don't know. It turns into an MMS, a multimedia message. Because once it goes beyond one page, you're no longer sending an SMS. You're sending an MMS. So an SMS is specific, short, brief, sweet, and nice. And that's what distincts an experience from the experience. Something just happens. Just happens. Not too many. Not too many stories. Bam, something happens. And I don't know. Like the example I gave. The police stops me and that's it. A normal Monday to Friday journey on the motorway becomes a different one. So all it takes is a specific moment. And there have been different types of experiences even in the Bible. You had Job. The Job experience, he went from gr grace to grass to back to grace. We have the ark experience with Obededom. There was the upper room experience when the disciples encountered the Holy Spirit and they got together in fellowship. I mean, there's been the mountain, the Mount Sinai experience with Christ, uh, with Moses. There was the wilderness experience with Christ. There's so many different types of experiences. But I'll move on to the letter M. And the letter M I have called Mark. You know, one thing we all have in common is the lives of those who had those encounters never remains the same. So when you have the encounter, it leaves the mark. It's no longer the same. I had, I had an experience on the motorway a few years ago. I was driving to church on a Sunday morning. And for some reason, my car just did a spin. Me, myself, and I with the kids in the car my car and nobody else. To the glory of God, I just narrowly missed a jeep that was driving past beside me. The car was a complete write-off, but thank God for his grace. The kids and I were fine. And we managed to even get, get to church. Someone gave us a lift. But that moment, that spot, for so many years, was no longer just the motorway. Every time I drove past it, that moment, that spot, there was something about it. In fact, for so long, I couldn't drive on the motorway. I had to go through the villages to get, to get to the next town I was going to. It leaves a mark. When you have the experience, it leaves a mark. It always does. And when we experience God, like Job did, and Job is a very good example of someone who experienced God, something happens. We get to understand God better. We get to understand life better. We get to even understand ourselves better. 
That's why I say to Christians, let's no longer worry or fear about going through trials and tribulations. The Bible already told us that we will go through trials and tribulation. I remember my father when I was young, he was addressing the church um, one, one service. And um, he had said to them that, do not pray that you would not have enemies. Instead, pray that your enemies will push you to your point of glory. Sometimes I wonder why we even pray not to have enemies. Because if you look at the man that we're following, his enemy was right in the circle. Judas was an enemy. But if there was no Judas, there would be no cross. If there was no cross, there'd be no salvation. So why are we praying for Judas to be out of the equation? I want Judas to be in the equation so that I can get to the cross, so that I can have the salvation, which is the benefit that comes with the cross. I remember someone was threatening me once and I made so much threats. And by the time they were done, I went on my knees and I said, please do it quickly. Because if you don't do it, you might stop what God wants to do for me. So I'm happy for you to do it. Because I know that if you do it and God allows it to happen, then there is a greater glory that awaits me. Yeah. We'll look at the letter S. Secure. What happens when you have the test, the experience is that you secure something. You gain something. You obtain something. You get something. You receive something. There is an evidence of something. So when you talk about experience, you could, you're talking about gaining, and you could be talking about gaining knowledge, it could be wisdom, it could be a skill, it could be understanding, it could be strength, it could be an answer that you're looking for. There's so many things that we can gain from the experience. But the ultimate thing is that when we have the experience, we always have a gain. Now I'm going to move to the next word. The next word is fact. So I said the SMS fact. We've dealt with the SMS. Now we're looking at the fact. What's the fact? The fact in this is that letter F says you must follow him. I will follow him. He may go. That's it. Follow him wholeheartedly. Seek him at all times and in all things. Seek him with everything. Uh, my father and the Lord said something recently. He said a lot of times we're seeking his hands, not his face. Seek his face. He has something in his hands, but seek his face. He has what you want in his hands, but seek his face. I just told you about how the adages keep coming these days. There's another one that comes to mind. It says the talk is in the eyes. Uh, when we want to do serious talk, it's face to face. So when you go for a job interview, it doesn't matter how many phone and then go for, you know, the, the new technology. It doesn't matter how many phone calls and all that interviews you have, to, processes you have to go through. Until you've gone through a face-to-face, -face, you know, thank God for Skype. Even if you don't come in physically, they still want to do face-to-face. -face. Why? Because the talk is in the eye. Because when I talk to you face-to-face, -face, then I connect with you. I can connect with your soul. I can get a better vibe of what's going on. Because words are just a very little bit of communication. The tone, the body language make the greater part. So seek God's face, not his hands. A lot of times we're seeking his hands. And that's why we sometimes get it wrong. So when you seek his face, chances of activating his hand is higher. I'll move on quickly to the letter A. And letter A is action. And then I go back to the verse that we read. Remember the first two tags I gave on the verses? Action and action too. It takes action. You have to take necessary action. Thank God that faith without works is dead. It takes necessary action. Hannah was devastated. Her husband had no clue what she was talking about. Because from the statement he made, you can tell he had no clue. The, the other wife was feeling herself, of course, who wouldn't? I have what you don't have, you know, to talk about. What you say, I'm gonna check my car out, it's a 2020. Yours is 2000 and what, 2002. Can't talk to me, what do you know? You know, 
She was going through so much, but yet she still kept on taking action. She kept on going, and she went. And that's what the first verses of the text make, made us understand, that she went and worshipped the Lord. I talked about the song. Today I will lift up my voice in praise. Actually, the song says, what shall we do today? Yeah. Uh, for I know you are always there for me. Almighty God, you are my all in all. Uh -huh. Now let me hear you sing it. Even when uh -huh. Thank you. Amen. When success comes your way, were you going to cry before? Uh -huh. When success comes, I always ask, when success comes your way, what do you do? You rejoice. You praise God. So what is when so the person who sang the song says, when trouble comes my way, I will praise the Lord. And that is where the work is. Who needs you to, who needs to know whether you praise God when success comes or not? I don't need to know. Because I know if I give you good news now, the way you will scream and run in this place, we will think something is going on if we're not careful. It, depending on the level of news. I remember getting one news three years ago. I was in the house with one of my young darlings. And she was helping to clean the house and she, you know, I just walked in. I was like, oh, auntie, you, you had a letter. I opened the letter. It was something I've been waiting for for over five years. I was screaming, jumping in the kitchen, just rolling on fire. She came in, she stood there and said, I hope she's okay. Auntie, she didn't know what to say. She was just looking at me. But I was overjoyed. I rang my sister. I couldn't talk. I was just there calling her name. She was like, what happened? I couldn't talk. That was joy. You don't, nobody needs to compel you. It will activate itself. But when trouble comes your way, what will you do? By the grace of God, I, I get the privilege and the opportunity to minister in songs a few good times. And it's not every time that I'm feeling up to it. There are times just before I go and take the microphone, I'm like, how can I get out of this? Because my, I'm not just myself. But thank God for the understanding, and I love David so much. And when I went to Israel last year, it was one of the things I was excited to do, to just go to the city of David. Because God brought me through you know, his story, and I just seen how and why he was the man after God's heart. If you look at the book of Psalms, there are so many depressing Psalms. You can see that this man was a depressed man, but he always praised God. Praising God even when things aren't right. So no matter what comes my way, when trouble comes my way, I will praise the Lord. So when trouble comes our way, what do we do? Start to complain? Start to moan? We're human beings, don't get me wrong. I have my down moments. But then I call myself back to order and say, look, okay, enough of that pity party. Let's move on to the next thing. It's time to praise God. So I'm not saying I'm superhuman. No, I'm human. I do get up. I do get down sometimes. I get confused. I get worried. But when? The moment is up. We don't dwell in that too long. Exactly. Action must be taken. As something that um, I heard, you know, just this morning actually. I was like, oh, amazing how this ties into the message. It says you are just one person away from your new season. Amen. You're just one person away from your solution. You're just one person away from that new blessing. Amen. But it has to be verified. That's the, that's the clause I put into it. It has to be verified by his wonder yeah. and also stamped by his power. Yeah. Just like when you go online, you know, the business people will say, just one click away. Yeah. You click one time, just make sure you have your card ready because yeah. they need the details on the card. It, you have to verify by payment. Payment is what very validates your purchase. Yeah. His power, his blood has already done all of that job. His grace, his glory is already there. Yeah. You're just one click away from that one person. Yeah. Hannah was one click away. She could have despised her husband and lost that moment because he was her one person. And all she had to do was just one more time. So we're just one more person and just one more time away from our blessing. Let's be mindful not to lose it. So someone comes, I don't know, I sort of have a... That's just me, I'm not asking everyone to buy into it. I'm praying for God to help me. But I just have this sort of patience that when you are doing stuff that I know I should ordinarily not take. I first of all want to see, is this that moment when I should just let this person have a few days? Then I now turn around and say, God, over to you. 
or is this a moment of wisdom? So I always ask God, is this the time where we should answer the full or the time when we should hold back? Because we are just one person, one moment away. Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Whatever the Lord is doing in this season, my prayer is that he will not do it without you. Amen. That he will not do it without me. Amen. But beloved, we must make ourselves available. We must make ourselves available by following him, by taking action. And then when we do these things, let us see, of course, the change that we've been expecting. The change that we've been anticipating. He touched my life with his hands. My life changed. And this is not just a song for me, it is my testimony. He turned my life with his hands. And my life became a new one. Jehovah touched my life with his hands. My life changed. You're looking before you a foolish thing in the hands of God. Someone that would have been considered useless, foolish. But to the glory of God, any foolish thing in the hands of God is worth having. The Lord touched my life with his hands and my life changed. So when we've gone through SMS and we've done the following, we've done the action, the next thing must be a change. Amen. We cannot talk about the experience and not talk about change. It's not a pretense, but true change. Not a look-alike, but true change. One that will be noticeable. One that leaves signs. And I were very funny and wonderful, blessed people. So sometimes people will get pregnant and they'll say, don't tell anybody, hide it. Say, well done. Mm -hmm. It's five months now, keep hiding. Mm -hmm. After eight months, keep hiding. Mm -hmm. After nine months, when the baby comes, hide. When the baby is five years old, keep hiding. We glorify the devil so many times. And we limit our God. Because when there is an experience, when the experience happens, there has to be a noticeable change. Amen. Doesn't matter who sees it. The one who makes the experience happen can make anything else happen. Yes. We cannot continue to live in fear as children of God. Amen. I can't go to my father's house now and be living and be afraid to go in, except I've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be afraid his daddy home. He's not home. Let me go to my room before he comes. If he comes, tell him I'm sleeping. So that by the next day, his mind has come down. But when I've been good, I go home. And you know, thank God for parents. And I call my mom now and I hear, GB! I'm like, ah, braggy moment. Mommy, mommy, where are you? Definitely in the market or with someone or with people around you. You know, but she's, she deserves it. She's earned it. The experience brings about a change. It is a life changing experience. It's not just an experience anymore. It is the experience. And the final one, as I round up, is thanks. What shall we do today? Today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise, for I know for I know you are always there for me. Now pause. What did that song say? You are always there. Not sometimes. Not a few times. Not maybe, maybe not. Always. Father God on the mountain. He's the God in the land. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times. Now 
listen. Is still God in the and the God of the day is still God in the whether you're on the mountain, excited, shouting, can't contain your joy, or you're in the valley, at the bottom, lowest bit of it, down, he doesn't change. You and I are the ones that have changed. You and I are the ones that change. If I come back next year, and I manage to get some more money, I'll probably be fatter, looking different, looking better, I will change. If I come back in five years' time, whether money or not, I would have changed. Yes. Because I would have been five years added to my age. See me in ten years, I would change. Our children are changing. We change. Life changes. Policies change. Situations change. Okay. 20 years ago, that was when the mobile phones just came in. Remember the, the, those mobile phones? I still have mine in the house. The time I brought it out, the kids were laughing. Like, uh, those, they were laughing. But then when we got it, uh, we were the newest, you know. We knew, <laughs> we knew what was going on. But now if I bring that out now and I dash you, you're like, are you okay? <laughs> it has changed. But guess what? The God we served 20 years ago, still the same God we serve today. So like Hannah, you and I must rise. In trouble, in good times, in bad times, we must rise and praise him, worship him, exalt him. My life mantra is from the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28. My life changed when I got that verse, the revelation to that verse about 10 or so years ago. It says, all things work together for good. Do you know the clause? For those that love God.